And that two, fifth place right. match will be We have Connell at 38. I'm going to get that one. Okay, 38. Connell and Carlson. And all the I'll go back to 32 and see if he gets it. Connell against Carlson. Okay. Sanders against Hadeen. Oh, we get a good. Jerry Vargas, Jerry Lock. Waconia. Three. How do you say your last name? Biscaglia. Okay, Biscaglia. Biscaglia. Okay. Wisconsin boy. Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> We're trying, man. We're trying. Waukee, Iowa. We're, gonna go live. We're on. Okay. Ready? Ready? Ready. All right. Welcome back. We are doing this uh, third and fourth place match right now with Dan Zambrota and Zambrota Dan and Zambrata. Eric. Eric Young. <laughs> Eastern, Eastern Red, Red, Red Rover. Rover. We are at 100 pounds here. These are uh, a couple of young fellas. Uh, we've got uh, Voss. From Waconia. Yep. And then Biscolia. From Waukee, from Iowa. Iowa. You know, it's great we have these kids coming from out of state to wrestle in this tournament. It's outstanding. And Voss is in the red singlet, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And Biscolia is in the Robin black Wood. and purple singlet. Yep. And Voss trying to score from front head position from his knee. And they're both back of their feet right now. A nice shot by Piscolia. He got that single leg, but now he's trying to score. Ooh. Potentially dangerous. Yeah, got that. Hey, young fella. <laughs> Thank you. We had somebody sitting there right in the way of our camera. All right, they're back up the feet to score 0 0 with a minute, and oh, the clock is not moving. Now it is moving. A minute 15. Yep. Now we're. Voss is trying to score again from that front head position. And, and he's turned the corner. Biscoli has got that elbow. He just let her loose. That's good. Yep, now he good move by Voss. Locked up the cradle, and now he got the. That's where that long body comes in handy. That oh, kid's yeah. got some leverage. There. I hate those because I'm not a long body myself. <laughs> Anytime people get a cradle on me, I You're just. You're in trouble, huh? I'm in trouble. And you must have had fun when Kingsley was in the practice oh, room. Oh, although I was 100 pounds heavier than Kingsley. <laughs> Just a reminder, this is the JJ Classic uh, preseason tournament run by the Intermat. And these guys are doing a wonderful job raising funds for the fight against cancer. Anybody that uh, has been touched or feels touched by that, don't be afraid to send a donation in. The American Cancer Society, you get it to the JJ Classic, they'll get it where it there belongs. Go. There you go. Got the cradle locked, locked up. up. Locked it up, but now Only got seven settle. seconds left, though. He needs He's running he out of time. time. He's going to get points, though. So. Yep, he got the two count. Got the two count. Yep. So yep. now he's going to be up 4-0, heading into the beginning of the second period. That was good timing for him. He needed to score a few points with that good of a cradle. So I think he got about five or six mat or five matches in him by this time, and he is, you know, no longer rusty. Preseason wrestling, he knows his timing. Yeah. You know where he's at in the mat, and he's able to to put scores on the board. Yeah, four points. Jerry's getting the all the scores table in organized. You know when Jerry Reeker's out the refereeing, he helps take charge. I don't know the other referee, but I know he's been around the area a long time too. Oh yeah, you can see him at every major event. The Clash, the state tournament, and I believe the Christmas tournament yep. as well. Yep. He is a well-respected official around the state. Yep. I think uh, either Rod Frost or Bill Olson was helping uh, organize the referees this weekend. It's wonderful. These guys are volunteering their time just to get prepared for the season, too. So, so it's, it's preseason for them as well. Now, I know that they usually get paid, but for... You know the right cause, the uh, volunteer yep, at the time, yep. and this is this is great. Yep. So hats off to them for that as well. You know, being a referee, has never... got a high half on here. He just can't finish her off. Yeah, you don't get a, you don't, for the edge of the people don't give credit enough to the referees no, who are controlling no. the match, keeping no. the kids safe while they're competing. And it's funny how 
hundreds of people, thousands of people sitting up in the stands can see the match so much more clearly than a referee that's only three feet from it. And yet, if you go out there and try to do it as a referee, it's uh, not an easy job. No, it's not as easy as it looks. So there next you time you want to yell at the referee, take a hard oh, look in the mirror. It's an interesting ride. You see the way he's got kind of a high. Yeah, I, it's unconventional at best, yeah. and I just I just don't think it's as effective as you would like, but it is working for him right now. So. Yeah, Voss off his base, working on that chop of that arm, looking for some kind of a tilt. Yeah, looking to secure the rest two on one and, and the tilt, but Voss would not give up on that. So. He's fighting for his life to get back up on his feet. You gotta have a hand control at all times if you want to get an escape from here. You know, especially young wrestlers, they don't pay attention to the details, but you know, a lot of fundamental, that's what wrestling's about, fundamentals. If you do those right, the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, and sometimes kids get sick of hearing hand fight, hand fight, hand fight. Well, there's a reason coaches, you know, there's a reason that moms and dads are yelling for hand fighting. If you can control the opponent's hands, they really cannot get out of a bad position. So. Right, and, and usually if you control someone's hand, they can't attack you. <laughs> right. So all you young wrestlers, when your coach yells hand fighting, there's a reason for it. And here, at the beginning of the third period, Voss is up 4-0, and now he's on top with Bisgliota. Um, he is on the bottom trying to escape here. Could Dylan Chase please come to the head table, please? Dylan Chase to the head table. Working up off his base. A lot of pressure being applied by Voss. Broken and he, back down. Let's try to go for... Well, he was going for the cradle, but now he's in position to try just to ride him top. We return him to the mat, and there you go. Good job. there's a nice reversal. Come on, rip, rip. Oops, rip watching the wrong match. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, where do you see? Yeah, the I just get excited. Man. You know, there's a room full of people, the room full of people wrestling. It's just exciting to think about the upcoming wrestling season. We've got, uh, we're not quite to Thanksgiving and here we are getting prepared for wrestling already. It's just wonderful that we can get some, get some early action in. I cannot wait for this year's wrestling season. It's the only thing that saved me from the bitter, long, cold winter we had last year. So I'm hoping we don't have the same weather conditions, but I hope we have great wrestling action to watch all year long. You know, I, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about wrestling is I don't care what the weather it is outside because we're inside watching and enjoy wrestling all together and it doesn't matter. I don't care what the weather is outside. Yep, if you can't get out, get out and support your wrestlers by watching them live on the Min USA uh, wrestling screen. They do live streaming throughout, uh, throughout the winter. We'll have events most of the time on the weekend. Sometimes you'll have a... Tuesday or Thursday night match, but uh, check your check your listings because you will get live wrestling that you will be able to stream right to your right to your home computer. So we'll be able to broadcast all year long. And just to conclude the match here, Voss won with a score of four to one. He let go of an escape late in the match. Hello there, young fella. Coda. And where are you from? Ethan Cota from Kenyon, Wanamingo. Okay, I'm all right. Sarepwa. Sarepwa from Worthington, Minnesota. Okay. They'll be wrestling for uh, consolation. We're good. We're good. All right, upcoming match. We'll have Cota from A couple KM. of state qualifiers here. Yep. And then we also have Seb E. Boy, if I said correctly. He is from Wisconsin. Worthington. Worthington. Yep, way out there on the border. Young Mr. Mark Prenny is his head coach. 
Um, that Prenny name's been around Minnesota wrestling forever. His father, Chuck's in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, so congratulations to him, and it's wonderful to see these young guys out here wrestling. Sarah Poy's uh, wrestling partner is uh, is uh, Mark's youngest, or one of Mark's sons, so it's gonna be exciting to watch them represent Worthington this year on the wrestling match. You know, Ethan Cota comes out of that Kenyan Wanamingo program. Boy, they really know how to put some wrestlers out on the mat for a tiny little community. They just they just do it every year, don't they? Sirpoy got the takedown there. Sirpoy is trying to He's break quick. them down and try to get in that, that leg leg ride and he's not able to do that, so. You know, what Coda's doing well is, is, is controlling the hand. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> and Sepoy is really strong. Hey, it's out, hey, just picking him up like it's nothing. <laughs> you know, I remember one in my day as wrestling, 10, 100, 103, I guess, back in the old weight class. The guys don't look as well put together as these guys do. Oh, no, yeah, they got shoulders on them now. There's, you know, there's a body to these kids. They're they're just a little time in the weight room is a wonderful thing for even young wrestlers. Not that they all have to be bodybuilders, but it's really it's, uh, they can help shape and define their bodies, get them stronger. It, it's not always the strongest guy that's the best wrestler, but it really helps prepare you when you're a little physically stronger than you were before you started in the weight training programs. And, and that makes me wonder, are we so hey, specialized hey. in the sport now that, you know, if the kids do wrestle especially, we train year round to, to improve That's ourselves. Yeah. You know, if, if you pick a wrestler from today versus a state champ from like 20 years ago, I'm curious to see what the outcome would be in the same weight class. That's an interesting thought. Come around, circle around. You know, you're going to have talented people from the water, whatever generation you're going to find them out there. You know, you go back to the, the Gene family from Albert Lee, those were some tough oh, yeah. guys. They wouldn't matter what generation they were in, they were going to find a way to win. But you see, you're like, you know, the Mark Halls of the world that are out there now. They're wrestling on an international stage now at a very young age. So, so well, yep, we've, we've, there would be some, some definite interesting matches. Yeah, and I, I mean, if you look at the... Right away. Um, hey, hey. The body, the physical control. body of these kids, and you can tell that they've been training year round yep. versus, you know, back in the day when <laughs> you're not just a wrestler, you're a wrestler, you're a football player, you're yep. possibly multi sport athlete. Right, yep. That seems to be the past. Now is either one sport and, and you stick with it. Let's get one here. So, this good and bad comes with it yeah. as well. We have good action going on out here. Look at the splits look at the there by split. U.S. Way and real flexible That's young so, wrestler. So That's flexible right and athletic. Oh. He's able to fend off. Coda uh, from being able to uh, take him down now. Now we're in a stalemate position. Hey, hey. And one final thought on that. I think it is good to have well-rounded athletes. You know. Uh, young men and women should be able to train and do a, a variety of things. But when you're, you know, an elite athlete, it, it's okay to, oh, wow, well, that was a quick step on. I think you caught him in the eye. I think so. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Whoa, that one hurt. Yeah, usually you don't just see guys able to get out like that oh. unless, you know, they got hit somewhere hard. And, and, yeah. And, yeah, that one, that one caught Coda right in the eye. You know, nowadays with concussion issues, you got to be really cautious about yeah. when when you got to stop the match. And the ref did the great thing, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, he caught it. And yep. And early in the year, you know, you don't want to have anybody hurt of a tournament like this. You want to see everybody 
you know, get matches, but go away from here healthy. That's the, that's the main thing. Right. And across from us is uh, Coach Davis and, and Red. Uh, I don't the know legend. You can see it. The legend from Old Town of now at Eden Prairie. Yeah, he is on the screen. There you go. See uh, far enough. He's there to uh, support Brand Kale, who um, will be wrestling yeah, for third. Soon yeah, coming yep. up here. All right. But yeah, it's wonderful to see these legendary coaches and referees coming out supporting the action. A minute and ten seconds left here in the second period. Your Sway is leading three to nothing, but uh, this match is probably a long ways from over. We've got a lot of action to come, go before this one's done. A couple of quick young men, hand fighting. Forward, deputy, pressure on that. You know, I'm surprised not seeing more wrestlers. KM come to the JJ Classic, yeah, and, and I'm glad Dakota make his way out here. Now he's from Kenyon Wanamingo, oh, so Kenyan, yeah, we, it's easy to get confused down here. We got Cass and Manorville, uh, you yeah, know, a so really good thinking. program. They're just I down the road. Um, oh, no, no, it, it would, you know, they're they do things a little different. It'd be nice to have kids here, but you know, we respect the fact that they didn't get down here. That's okay. Uh, but anytime anybody yeah. wants to come join us, they're yeah. welcome to join. Yep, and Cody just... That was a nice scramble nice here. Scramble, try being Still in a scramble. Here. Oops. And almost by the scissors. They outlaw that. Hey, watch hey. Side yeah. to side. That was a good scramble. Both both those wrestlers were in a position where they could score, and the other one had a, had an answer for their for their moves. So, good scramble. Third period. Your sway still ahead, three to zero. And he's had choice, and he's going to go ahead. Yep, referee's a little rusty too. Jerry forgot who his choice was. But hey, that's good sportsmanship. The kids, the kids helped them out there. There you are. That crab ride. Just to remind people that there will be a third annual Minnesota Stone Holiday Cup coming up here on December 19th and 20th, right here at Rockton RCTC, at the same time as the Minnesota Christmas Tournament for the high school uh, tournament. And I think it's a great event for Minnesota USA Wrestling here in the state of Minnesota. So please come and support. You're going to see some legendary wrestlers out there, people that are on the international stage. I don't know that they have a, a ladies division. They have in the past had them, you know, throughout the country, but I don't know whether they have one at. I, at, I at think the, there will be as well. I heard Storm that Cup. the organizer had mentioned that. Well, that'd be awesome. See some Olympians showing up. How often do you get a chance to watch an Olympian in action? Not very often. I will definitely make it here for it. Along with the class as well. Pretty spoiled in our part of the country. We've got some of the best best wrestling in the nation, and it takes place, you know, miles from miles from home in a lot of cases. So between the Minnesota Christmas tournament, you mentioned the Cheesehead tournament over in Wisconsin, Rumble on the Red up in North Dakota. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the granddaddy of dual meet tournaments right here in Rochester, the Clash. Yeah, there you go, uh, 32 back. teams from around the country come to compete for a, for a national title. This year we got an added element. We're going to have a mini Clash for the teams that want to bring their, their kindergarten for sixth grade squads. We're going to have a mini Clash tournament. So you'll also have a chance to get uh, Minnesota kids some competition against schools from around the country. I wonder how many teams are going to be participating in 16. That. We've got 16 teams. Um, right now, all the teams that are in the clash have the uh, they have priorities as to you know they can send a team if they want to, and we understand that it'd be kind of hard to send a uh, you know mini team from New Jersey. So you might see a few spots open for some of the some of the local programs, and we would really encourage local coaches uh, that have talented talented teams. Uh, check into that uh, later in December, about the first, first second week in December, we'll, we'll have open registration for that. Yeah. Surfway so, wins that match, so he takes third place at the JJ Classic 2014. 
name please? Jaden, last name? Van Manen. Uh, Van Manen. Portillo. Portillo, okay. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Go, Jaden. So Von Manen and Portillo, a rematch of an earlier um, quarterfinal bracket. Uh, Von Manen won 5-4 earlier, but uh, Portillo was the uh, number one seeded kid coming into this tournament. So it could be interesting to see how this match goes this time. Yep. Portillo is in red. Red, with Mexico on his on his singlet. Yep. I love how they swap singlets when they get to these international Watch competitions. Your head. And then the kid gets Watch to wear them in a tournament like this. Why not? It's all for fun, all for entertainment, all for a good Rainbow cause. Wizard. Deep Rainbow. single. He's trying to finish it here. High. High finish. Von Manen defending. He's Rainbow. a long-geared kid. Oh, man, these are a couple of talented wrestlers. <laughs> he wanted to flee the mat there, I think. Oh, yeah. But, you know, can you blame a kid for, for getting, getting out like that in that situation? Yeah. Now, I never really like to have my wrestlers talk to the referees too much when they were out there. I would prefer letting the coaches discuss situations like that with a referee. A wrestler's wrestler. Just, a, just a, another hit for you young wrestlers. <laughs> why, why, why do you think that's such a bad thing to talk to the ref? I, I just, personally, I think if it's the coach's job. That's what I think. I couldn't, we'll agree, at that. I couldn't agree, agree with you more. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Little hand cramp. Yeah, hand little jam finger. You know, there's nothing wrong with having nothing wrong with having uh, uh, fire. You know that aggressiveness you want to win, but you know sometimes you just have to, as a wrestler, let the referees do their job, let the coaches do their jobs. Your job is wrestling, so that's that's kind of always been my opinion. Oh no, I, I think that's a that's a well respected opinion because I think some you know sometimes kids in heat of moments say things that they shouldn't be doing. Say it. Yeah, we've all been kids, so we understand that happens. You know. Watch arm, but yep, well, coaching and a little bit of discipline shows discipline if you can keep your control out there. Von Mann is still favoring that hand. That that kind of. Yeah, Portillo seems to be aggressive, attacking, yeah, yeah. and controlling the, the mat. And I think soon he's going to get... Um, Van Man and Mike may get a warning here for stalling. I think the ref's giving him a little bit of a little bit of a break because he's trying to trying to let him get that hand healed a little, so to speak, get a little rest there. But Portillo's great stance there, just controlling the center of the mat. Yeah, Portillo, what, what did he do? he go right after that hand. Yeah, well, he's not trying to injure it, but he knows where the advantage is. You right. Know? In our sports, sometimes that hand fighting can get, you know, where you get a poke or you get a little bend or they get a little kink in your in your fingers, and it, it's it's hard when your digits don't work. One more time. So starting the second period with 0-0 with Portillo in the bottom oh. and no change, no change. That was good mat awareness there. Portillo thought he had got the escape and Von Mana just dove right back in on those legs to make sure he didn't give up Dave, one. You know, with, with that ability to take a shot, I, I'm surprised that he's not just let him go so he can work on a takedown. You know that, uh, as, at least in the high school level, it's so hard to rise somebody out for a whole period without... That hand is really bothering by Monon right now. So maybe he's buying time. And again, you know, Rod Fart Frost is our referee on this one. And a lot of times referees will get after a kid to hurry back to the center, but I think he's giving them just a little extra break. Preseason tournament. There's the escape. If the score is one nothing Portilla. Portilla. There's a hit. Deep. Nice, nice recovery. Good scramble, good scramble. Good scramble going on here. 
This is really interesting. The referee's got nothing up, even though Portilla's on his back. He has not awarded the takedown, so he's not awarding back points. Remember I told you about half uh, a leg? Oh, look at yeah. that. Hey, look at this. Put that foot up there. He's, he's tall enough. Uh, oh, that was a great scramble. And your 113-pound champion. Hey, that was fun. That was fun, Dominic LaJoy of Gaylord, Michigan. Gaylord, Michigan. That's where those kids came from. That's a long way to come for a preseason tournament. Hats off to them. And I believe one of the one of the kids just won a yeah. title against Tyler Eisen. Beat Eisen, yeah. They pinned up though. Yeah, you and I said it earlier. We thought Eisen's probably deserved deserved to be seated a little higher anyhow. So he proved it. You know, prove it on the mat. That's what I always say as well. If you if you don't like your seat, go out and prove it on the mat. Hello. You know, maybe that kid from Gaylord, Michigan, did not uh, expose himself much last year, so that's why he wasn't ranked. I mean, he wasn't seeded going into the tournament. But again, you got to be the best to win the championship. So. Now, is Michigan allowed to travel? That's the other thing. A lot of these kids don't get to travel during the season, so that's why they're out here wrestling. You know, the preseason tournament. Uh, you know, all the way down to. The Super 32s and out to the freak show in Nevada, a chance to wrestle kids from around the country because some of these high schools don't travel. And I mean, I understand the, there's a reason to limit that, but at the same time, you're limiting the kids' ability to compete at the highest level. And to me, that kind of bothers me a lot. Yeah. No, those are set by high school rules. You know, every every state has a an association of high schools that they decide. You know how much travel they can have, because they are F students after all. And you got to do that first. Studies and prior studies and education comes first. But a lot of Look times these hey. cross-country tours and bonding that you get with your teammates, you learn a lot with those as well. So right, and there's some social aspect of of spending time as a team. I think there's some value to that, and I hope to see that they open that up in the future. Yeah, come. yeah I think. He has not went to the Especially side at all, in the state of Minnesota, we have teams here that could easily compete. Very, very, become very competitive at other tournaments around the nation. Yeah. But we can't get there. Yeah. Because of restrictions. A little injury so, time out here, so. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> Cut him! Take down! The intensity of wrestling match is always fun. This is exciting. Yes, sir. So what just happened there is McNulty. Oh, whoa! So yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We're in a person in the in the world. We, what would just happen there is he just got flipped. And that's potentially dangerous, and we can't allow that to go on. And I'm calling the lawyer. We need to get need to get more involvement, but this, yeah. That got a wind knocked out of him, and we're gonna have to allow him time to recover. And that is not something that we like to see at a tournament anywhere. Placing wrestlers, when you win your match, we'll just bring that belt sheet right back up here so we can get our placings and, and all that stuff put together. So as soon as you win the match, please bring the belt sheet up to the head table. Thank you. So right now, we restart the match with 36 seconds left, and Patillo is leading three to zero. Van Manen is wrestling aggressively, trying to 
try to come back here, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen right now. 27 seconds left with Portilla is in control. About to score another takedown here with the assistant himself in the right place. So, stalemate here, and we're going to have to start again. I have a man in here talk back to the official and should be and he got penalized two more points. So, so and also Cortia score takedown so 7-0. Cortia took third place. <laughs> You know, one of the fun things about a tournament like this, Eric, is you see people you haven't seen in years and years. My old high school coach, Chuck Brenny, just stopped by to say hello. So we had to spend a few minutes saying hi to Chuck. Man, the stories those guys can tell you, it just it brings a smile from ear to ear. Brian Moss. Brian Moss, Bemidji. Good luck, young fella. Bu Noah Buck, Apple Bu Valley. Good luck, young man. <laughs> Noah Buck got a little stronger in the offseason. Yeah, he looked a lot different than than last year for sure you know these are high school kids and yeah. you never know what they're gonna do or grow in, in a year and he looks a lot more well put together than he did last year for sure brian moss is a 120 pound wrestler that oops i'm having a problem with the computer here he's been on the state stage so often just a talented young fella I like to watch Brian wrestle. Right now, they kind of feel each other out. Hand fight, yep. hand control. Moss is working that Russian bar earlier. Two together, Buck! He's two together! Yeah, in his corner is Mark Hall, his teammate, trying to help cheer him on. Mark, for a young fella, he gives an awful lot back to these, you know, teammates and people in the wrestling room. You know, Moss just scored a takedown, and Noah was fighting him off, but Moss is just too quick. Get one! Get one! Get one! Get one! Hey, let's get one. All right, come on. Get your hips away. Yeah, Moss. If I, I think he's seated second, and uh, he did not, he did not win a semi. So he's here. He's looking to quote unquote punish this kid yeah. Noah here for it, and he looks like he's the aggressor in this match up to this point. Now so. Brian is. He's a he's a high motor kind of guy. He wants to wrestle at a at a pace where it's score points, dominate, control. All 113 place winners. Please come to the head table. The end of the first period here with the score. Two nothing. Moss is leading this match. He wrestled earlier in the day where Moss won the very close decision two to nothing earlier in the day. So. if Noah learned anything from that match. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> hey, anytime you wrestle a high quality opponent, you hope you learn something from it. You always learn something, even in a loss. Yeah, exactly. Matter of fact, sometimes when you lose, you learn the most. Heck, in my wrestling days, I learned a lot. You mean you lost a lot? <laughs> oh, that wasn't very nice of me, was it? But no, that was the intention. Yeah, the guy that beat Brian earlier actually just won the state, the JJ Classic title over on the other mat, so it wasn't like that kid that beat him was a fluke. That kid was Pressure tough. Forward. Pressure forward. Buck's a good rider here. He's got control of the deep waist. Pressure on the head and shoulders. Keeping Moss kind of buried on the mat here. Every time Moss tries to build up, Buck pushes him right back down to the mat. Got a warning call against uh, against 
Buck. Moss for... Oh, Moss, yes. Yeah, because he's not really doing a whole lot down there with his head on the mat. Even though he's got his hips up, he's still not doing a lot. Oh, you got it! Working up, working up. I'd like to see a little more activity down there on the bottom line. I would agree, and the ref made the right call, yeah. but dang it. Yeah. And, you know, Buck is... There he comes to his feet. Finally got escape here for 35 seconds left, and the score is 3-0. Moss is leading the match. Now, Bemidji is, what, an eight-hour drive from here? Oh, yeah. So he may, he may have traveled further to get down here than some of these other kids from other states. It's just amazing that families are willing to drive and support, get their kids some matches. You know, I'm always impressed with Bemidji Wrestling. They have been competing at a high level for many years, even though how, how far away they are and how small their community is. And they've been, they've been very, very tough. Yeah, I would imagine it's hard to get quality matches during the season when, you know, who are you going to wrestle? Canada? They're, they're <laughs> way up there. Three to nothing score here. Start of the third period, Brian Moss leading. trying to change levels, create openings. Moss staying in that solid wrestler stance. Love the sights and sounds of wrestling. Have wrestling back on the air, back in front of you. Uh, Monster score. That was a nice snap down. down yeah. yeah. Yep. Come and behind. Go behind. Yep. You know, just worked him until he got him out of position and pulled him down far enough where he could get that opening. Monster trying to get a leg in, but no, he's blocking every move of that. Hand control that we talked about yep. earlier, you gotta have that if you want to escape. Yeah. And no Noah Buck is not controlling that hand right now. Well, I would imagine Brian Moss has a go. pretty tight grip and he's worked on it over all the years that he's been wrestling. And the moment he did get some hand control. Yep. He's Popped right it up. up. Yep. Again, kids at home, you're watching this. Hand control is hand where control. It's where the action's at. But you also have to do something with that hand control too. So don't don't just grab a hand and hang on to it. Finish with me again. And look at this. No buck is trying. Yep. Trying the outside single. Yep. Finish it. Eight seconds left. No one's trying last attempt here. Yeah. Brian take defended down. that one pretty good. With four seconds left, the score is five to one, and I think that's how it's gonna end. Yeah. yeah. Good sportsmanship there. They would shake hands even before the referee asked them to. So, a couple of quality quality wrestlers out there. Yeah. You know, it's early in the season yet, but I I would imagine that both of them are going to keep on improving. And I think yeah. Noah, seeing him last year, seeing him this year, I think he's going to be. Improving. How old is Noah? I think he's only a sophomore. And I know Brian's seen you this Tanner Day. Jose Acosta. Jose Acosta. Yep. Acosta. 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 All right. Yep. I'm sorry. Which one was which? Day is in the USA Wrestling singlet there. Yep. I wonder if he's out of the Moundsview program, possibly. Is that oh, ringing a bell to you at all? It, you know what? I have not. I'm just looking to see what weight class you're in because my son's going to wrestle on this mat. Oh, okay. So. Well, we're announcing the 126 pound match right now. Isn't that what's wrestling now? Yeah. Yep, we have Day versus Acosta. And Day is in the USA wrestling singlet, and Acosta's in the white and the red ankle band. Well, there's a nice. Shot, reshot. Costa looked to finish the takedown here, and he did. There's two. All right, let's go. Well, he works up to cover. 
Now he came all the way from Manitowoc from this tournament, so that's, uh, again, hats off to this young fella to come get some good quality competition. And where is that exactly? No idea. <laughs> it sounds far away. Somewhere next to Timbuktu, I... It is, it does sound far away. Finish! On the mat! Oh, the there's mat. a nice, there you go. nice Good counter reverse. right on the edge of the mat. Very, yeah, and Dave, very well timed. Yeah, not just well timed, but also mat awareness. Know where, yeah, exactly. where, where you're on the mat, and, and you can hear he's actually listening to coach. I, I heard him. Hey, keep him on the mat, and he did exactly that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he wrestles out of the Pinnacle program, so you know they're getting quality coaching there too. That they're not getting just from the high school coaches. Brandon Paulson's got a crew up there that will coach these kids up and it's wonderful for the sport of wrestling in Minnesota that they have, they have people that are willing to give these kids a lot of extra time and attention away from away from the high school, man. Yeah, and I, I think because of that program, the, the level of competition in our state has risen in the last 10 years or so. Yep, I think you're right. Go back to, you know, the fact that you have uh, you have uh, the Clash tournament down here, you see kids coming from all over. You've got the Minnesota Christmas tournament, you get kids from from other programs coming in and wrestling. So you're right, uh, those those combinations have stepped up the game. Yeah, and now we have the Pinnacle, we have the Elite, um, and other programs around the state that yeah. I'm not even aware of. Down here in Rochester, we've got the Inner Drive, so you, you know, those those young people from southeastern Minnesota that want to have a chance to wrestle, they can they can go to the inner drive and get a little extra coaching. Those guys that are coaching that have spent a lot of time in the college programs. You know, they've been around the, the country, so it's just wonderful for our sport that these people are willing to give back. Oh, that a potentially dangerous there. The score is two two to two. And a minute and 35 left in the second period. Would Day start on top here and work. Get it. trying to get Cross the cradle ride. and get the cradle in, but it could potentially be dangerous here. So. Yeah. Get that leg. There it is. There it is. Finish it now. Got that long track. body. He's trying to throw that, throw that hip over and get him turning. You know, Costa is consistent himself really well. Otherwise, he'd get thrown over. And, yeah. and now I think the ref's gonna. You have to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Look out! There they go. Oh, they've been in that position before. The uh, practice room, you know, they both are like, all right, we'll ra relax and roll out of it. But here you can see the the tenseness of of the competition. The ref had to step in. Right. And stop it. Right, it's for a good cause and everything, but these kids want to win. They, you know, this is important for them to, to be out there and a good display, good put on a good show. You know, Day is riding pretty tough here with 40 seconds left in the second period. It's not for a lack of effort by Acosta trying to get out. Day just when he was relentless. Yeah. Now there's an interesting position he's got the side headlock on from the from the oh, the ride. reversal could po potentially happen here if it's not careful. Maybe at least a scramble position out of there right yeah. there you go you got the reversal. that was the right call he had uh, the support yep points yep. yep that was patience on on very, Acosta's very part patient. he did, did a really good job keeping his composure kind of frustrating day a little bit you can see him shaking his head out there Pushing now, T. Let's go. We're ready to go. Girl. Costa here try to push some more points on her to hold on to this lead. But Dave, if he really wanted to come back you gotta get out of here yeah you gotta have that hand control i know it's hard with this this ride that he got in him but oh he's got a good turk going now doesn't he yeah yeah but 
You got to crank that if you want to yeah. score. Yeah. There you go. There comes the crank you're asking yeah. for. A lot of pressure on that head and shoulders. Can high T shake it. Referee breaks it yep. there. And that's the right thing to do. Come on, we gotta you go. want a kid to separate his shoulder, yeah. especially at a preseason pre tournament. tournament. And nobody was in proven position there, really. They were both kind of fighting, but nobody was making drastic improvements. So let's get them started, refresh, you know, fresh start. I, I always have a hard time with kids putting the head near by their knee because they're asking to get cradled. And I'm surprised <laughs> that. He doesn't Josh recognize hasn't, that, hasn't right? The cradle. And, and any program I ever worked at, that's a big move. Well, maybe he's maybe he's comfortable down at that position for some reason. I'm surprised this coach didn't recognize that. Just say, hey, cradle. And it was it was there. Go, we gotta go. I was talking to somebody earlier. I heard a conversation where not everybody's go, go, comfortable go. in every position when they're out in their wrestling mat. You almost have to be nowadays, uh, you know, if you're not a cradler, you still, when the position presents itself, you should be, you should be comfortable enough to, to be able to use it when it's there. Yeah, and speaking of cradle, way back in the day, uh, stable used to be dominant. As, as, as that's the bread and butter with Coach Dravis, with the cradle, and then most recently with Apple Valley, Brandon Kingsley, and, you know, that's his signature move. Yep. It's, it's making a comeback. Yeah, even in college, you'll see kids still cradling each yeah. other. And it Ed Ruth. Whoop, um, whoop, whoop. Against the dangerous there. Yeah. yeah, Ed Ruth. Get caught in that cradle, you'll remember it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not getting out. <laughs> 15 seconds left here in third period. Goss is still there. leading 2-4. to four. Now here's the position where he's got to be careful not to give up a two-point reversal and pay attention. But I think he's really comfortable riding. So I think so, and I think that's just how the match is going to yep. end. There. So Acosta winning the match four to two. Hats off to him. He gives his nod to my dad standing over in the corner. So the trip from Manitowoc, wherever Manitowoc is from, I wish it is worth it. Way out. <laughs> Hey, where's where, where are you from? Where's Manitowoc located? That's by, you know where Two Rivers is? Where? What state? Oh, Wisconsin. Okay. And where's it by? Uh, Lake Michigan. Oh, All right, okay. cool, man. Thank you. Well, congratulations. Thanks congratulations. for coming down. Louis Sanders. Louis Sanders. Sanders. Adam Hadeen. This would be a good match. Here we have a couple of young fellows that have equated themselves rather rather well in the histories books of uh, Minnesota wrestling. Louis Sanders has two state titles and Adam adeen has been to the state tournament several times. And he's always been wrestling tough. He's a scrambler and Louis's not afraid of a scramble so it's fun to watch these fun to watch these kids get out there and mix it up. Now if I'm not mistaken Louis Sanders committed to North Dakota State. And then what happened there? Oh, you win here, you win out of Is he at South Dakota State then? At, was that the change? I think that I think so. I think Cam Sakura had the same thing, right. if I'm not mistaken. And so. I don't know what Cam will end up. Was it South Dakota also? That bottom line. That's kind of what I thought I read, but it's a possibility. You know, the name Sanders in the state of Minnesota yeah. does ring a bell. And I think there are some are they related? Yeah, there's so certain relations, sure. Cousins or something. Uh, are we offline, Dave? Yep, this came on board. Gravity, huh? He's mad because I moved it over to this table. Are we back on? Yeah, head on the mat. Your 2014 JJ Classic 
Change. We may have had a few technical difficulties there for a short period, so we should be back on the air now. Yep, now I think we're good to go. Okay, Thank good. you for Mr. Technology here. I'm just going to watch these right in here. Okay. They're really tight. You can see down there. Okay, so it's just green. Thank you. Now, yeah, I just looked up on, we were talking about Cam Scorer. He is uh, committed South to South Dakota State for a, Obviously, he's got a year left of wrestling in Minnesota, but then he'll be there. So. Yeah, so the, the two of them are now South Dakota State bound. Jack Rabbit's got a lot of good things going on out that program. Well, Mr. Kish has a lot of good things going on up there in the North Dakota program. So it's good to see our, our, our high school kids getting a chance to wrestle, maybe pay for some education, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them. I think wrestling in, in general at all levels, D2, you have the Dragons, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then also D3. And the U of M, I mean, we're well represented with all the division in college. I don't think the score is right here. Somebody scored an escape there and they didn't put it up on the board and I'm trying to do a couple things at once here. Take control. Where do you want to be? Now, since we had a technical difficulty, I got distracted and yeah, me too. I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> That's a nice duck under. Good scramble going on at the edge of the mat. He gets the takedown. He kept well, following, following, following. He is. He called it earlier. You know, I'm not impressed with Sanders today. Being the top seed coming in and got beat. And then now, and now in the now in the third place match, he's. He's not into in it today. It doesn't seem like it is. Well, that happens sometimes in preseason tournaments. You know, it just now again. You know, it's it's one of those things that you know they're they're head up, head up right both head up, talented wrestlers no matter uh -oh, where. Uh -oh. oh, here comes the Sanders tip. This is one thing Louis is head really strong comfortable head right in. Head. Strong head. Strong head. That was one point escape, so it makes five two. Getting ready for championship matches, Freddie Stroker. The University of Minnesota recruit. Yep. And um, he's from Bettendorf, Iowa. What a great program. They always let it come up here and compete. And this year at the class, they are going to bring a loaded team. The Bulldogs will be a force to be reckoned with. Yep. You know it. And you know, you also got Oak Park coming down. You got uh, Apple Valley here. and. A union is coming up. With union Isle, yeah. Forward, forward. So it's, I know it's only preseason yet, but I'm looking forward to yeah. many, many good tournaments that are coming up. So now Louis Sanders is trying to mount the comeback here. The score is five to three. Yep. With Hadeen leading. Looks like Louis Sanders is setting something up. Yeah, he's looking for a throw or some right. kind of a, a foot to back move. kind of a move, possibly. Because right. hey. being down by two points. A little a blood minute, time here. Minute and five seconds left. He doesn't have that many options than to go for a big move here. And that, like we said earlier, had the such a good scrambler oh, yeah. and a good position wrestler that it, it's going to be hard to get one of those, but. Uh, 
you know, a takedown would set up a tie, and so that's what Sanders is working for. But like you're right, I think he might be looking for more than just a takedown. And sometimes it's hard to convince a young wrestler to get the takedown first, then right. worry about it. But hard to change Louis' style of wrestling. <laughs> right now on the mat five, we have Freddie Stroker. Wrestling. Against Griffin Perry. Yeah, but this is the match that everybody came to watch. Right. And, and we're kind of glad that we're a little break so we can watch <laughs> it ourselves. They're into the second period. Oh, no, though, that's a different match. Yeah, they're just started the first period, so. They're right down there on the tree there. Griffin. Oh, a nice pass by. Wow. Got the first take down. He's been having an outstanding offseason. So we're back to live action here. We're a minute left in the third period. Oh, hand control again. And in the green angle man, future golfer, Freddie Stroker of Bend, Watch that shot. Working on the clock again, get it readjusted. 50 seconds left in the third period. You know, those five seconds means a lot. It can. In wrestling, so it's, I'm, good, I'm glad that they're able to put it back. Yeah. Oh, there's a Russian bar. Hadin is tough with that. Sanders fights her off. Jadine wrestles out of that Rosemont program, that uh, storied Irish wrestling program. Rosemont always puts those hard-nosed kids out there on the wrestling mat, too, so the tip of the hat to the Rosemont crowd. And Louis Sanders from Lake Crystal Welcome Memorial. They've got something in the water going on up there, too, because those kids are in the state tournament over and over and over again. you, you got to give the Rosemont program a lot of credit for not just giving up every year because they're sharing the same conference with Eastview and Apple Valley. And, you know, it's, it's a tough, tough battle for them just to get to state yeah, because you yeah. have to guarantee number of spots for Apple Valley team. Are so, the Lakeville schools in with them then, too, possibly? I mean, Lakeview's got some really nice things going on with their program. Right. Around the state of Minnesota, it's wonderful to see. That we've added wrestling programs at high schools from around the state. Uh, way up north, they just, International Falls restarted their wrestling program. What better than that? So they can go and wrestle Bemidji, you know, we were talking about getting competition. It's great to have them wherever they're at. So it looked like Freddie made a quick escape and a takedown to lead that match over there. 3-2, huh? 3-3. Right. 3-3, Griffin got the escape. Back to our action, 11 seconds left. Louis keeps shooting, but Hadeen's got that good hand position, good hip position, keeps passing by. Louis's going for the big move. Might as well try it. Gave Hadeen a takedown, and that's the match. And Hadeen won the match 7-3. Yeah, he deserves that win. That was uh, uh, that was a wrestled, well well wrestled well, match there. Well positioned, and he didn't make any mistakes. So. so now we move up to the 138-pound weight bracket. Dylan. Your last name? Connor. Connor. Carlson. Carlson. And Connor. Connor. Carnell and Carlson. A couple of Minnesota guys here. Dylan Connell's out of Chisago Lakes. They had a heck of a team a couple of years ago, so I'm sure that uh, Connell's got uh, family and friends that wrestled on that program. And he's taking on... Carlson. Carlson. Uh, it must be, uh, is this Joe Carlson from Blaine, possibly? Yep, it is. Okay, good. Blaine's another one of those schools up in Section 7 that you know, talk about trying a tough section to get out of. <laughs> Anybody that makes it out of that section has got to be proud of themselves. I, I think they uh, they place really high at State 2 yep. every year yep. because they've been battle tested. <laughs> War of attrition up. <laughs> yeah. Nice 
nice takedown. Come forward, come forward. Do that like that. Come forward. Yes. Work up, buddy. Sorry folks, we're kind of distracted watching the 145 pound match. Currently over there, it's 4-3, uh, 145 in the third period. Oh, here's a high. Cranking on that a bar. You know, this is, this is the, the reason why we took kids a break down your opponent yeah, first yeah. before you do that. Yep, if he had had him on the mat, that would have been back points, but right. he got too excited ran over the top of it before he's ready and the bottom guy just kind of sat and rolled, rolled through it. Yep. Good mat awareness. So Carlson leads two to nothing. First period, two to nothing. Joe Carlson from Blaine leads this match, if I remember correctly. Yep, I think you're good, correct. Good. Good. Two to right, two down, let's turn him. A lot of activity on that other mat. Yeah, Freddie's Freddie. Freddy so patient. He gets in, gets in there, and he just keeps work, work, working. There's an escape, so that makes score three to, three to nothing. Car Carlson's winning. Hey, Pete, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming down. Good. Saying hello to the referees, giving them a little air time. Hey, continue it, continue it, y'all. That glorious, 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 thankless job that they have. On the first place match. And a round of applause for both wrestlers there. That's a knowledgeable crowd. They know they just saw something fun over there. Yeah. Griffin's only a junior. That's just remarkable. That kid's got another. You know, at the beginning of the match, I was, I thought he was in control with the first takedown. Yeah. And then, uh, you, you're right. Um, Freddie doesn't panic. panic. No, he wrestled really right, calm. Right, right, right. Able Jay, to come back. Jay Robinson's going to be glad to have that kid in the year in the Gopher wrestling program a year from now. That's going to be fun to watch that development. And possibly two or three years from now, he'll have Griffin Perry on. Oh, that would be sweet. <laughs> Now wrestling the 152 pound championship. Circle, circle, circle. All the way up, all the way up, double the edge. Good finish. Now look at a scramble here. That is good. Two. Both of them are great. Driving them, driving them. Elevate. Hook it. And now he hey, got the two Black points. Black shirt, black shirt, black shirt. Carnot is trying to make a comeback here with 30 seconds Come left. On. And the man. Now, get it. And he's down on the score, two to three. Get that leg hook and that hip turn. That's that's a good position to be in up here in the top. Yeah. Yep. Not a crank. Stop putting the pressure on. You got to be careful where he's at. A future golfer. Come on, Joe. Hip, hip over. Some tough defense here by Carlson. Would not roll over. Now he did. Wow, what a tough crank. That Look might be this. Carlson, that might be Carlson on the top. I think we got a mistake, switch over. That was Joe Carlson from Blaine that had that nice Turk there at the end. It's easy to get it switched around where we're distracted. So Carlson is winning three to two. Not five to three, five, five three. three, yep. With that reversal and back points, he takes the lead. Let's 
that's holding him here. I can't see. Oh, he's got it out far ankle. Okay. Yep, yeah, but it, short. See, we get out of there. Yep, now cleared it. Yep. Go for it. There's a there reversal, yep. Yeah. So now the score is 7 to 3. Carlson. Right up. Preseason, I think Connor got a little tired of that series. I think so. I don't think the conditions there yet. Not yet. I'd be puking by now. <laughs> like the boss is calling an ambulance on me right now. They make me go two, two, and two. <laughs> got a minute here. Tough ride. Heavy on him. Heavy on him. What's your feeling on wrestling with headgear as opposed to not wrestling with headgear? You know, I always need mine because I love, I don't want my cloud flowers. So yeah, yeah. I know some people take it as a sign of manhood or whatever, but I, I, I agree. I think you should protect your ears. You know, you have to live with those things for another 70 years, right. 60 years. You want them, you want them to function and be able to hear. No one's going to question your manhood by having headgear on in the state of wrestling. Yeah, if you've ever had a cauliflower ear pop, that that hurts. Yeah, there is a lot of pressure coming off that. Well, congratulations to Joe Carlson. He won the third place match here at the JJ Classic this year. Name, please. Pat. So now we are up to the 145-pound weight class. With Miles Patton and Miles Brand Patton, Kale. Ben Brand Kale. Yeah. Good luck. Both these guys were state tournament uh, entrants last year. Miles comes out of Rochester Mayo, and Ben comes out of the Eden Prairie program. It was really nice to see earlier in the day we saw Scott Davis, the head coach from Eden Prairie, came down to support a good cause. You know, when legends come down and support uh, wrestling like this, it's kind of a good sign that maybe the rest of the world needs to get out and support programs. So. And I'm hoping to see, I'm hoping to see more and more coaches. Uh, Encourage your kids to, to right. participate. Uh, especially in preseason. Yep, yep. You may, you may not win this tournament. There are tough kids here, but where else are you going to get a chance to wrestle you know, a Freddie Stroker or a Bobby Stevenson. You, you, you don't get a chance to get out to the wrestling mark hall that often. Take a shot, learn something from it. This should be a good match. These two guys are well-schooled, well-trained, solid physical wrestlers. Are not afraid to get in scramble positions again. So let's, let's hope it be, provides us an entertaining match here. Currently a little bit of a cautious approach. Nobody wants to make a real bad shot. Brand Kale had a nice, get a little off the out of position, took a good shot there. Hold yeah, on. I think he's feeling something a, cramped a cramp. or something. Yeah. I hate that feeling. That's one of those you can't do much about either. You, know, right. you just. And you hope that it won't linger throughout your match. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wait. Come ahead. There you go. Oh, now a little, little thumb to the eye. Thirty seconds. The score is zero zero with twenty five seconds left. A snap down attempt, a little pull, trying to pull Patton out of position. Brand Kell's trying to be heavy on the head, heavy on the shoulders. Patton had a good reaction to it, just right back to his base. Oh, we got a little blood. You know, standing over there waiting for the matches are potentially future starter from U of M. Can you name them all? Bobby Stevenson. Let's hope that Mark Hall II, as I refer to him, Deuce, 
Deuce, these yep. tags to go to the U of M. That would be a nice, nice and addition. We have and that, who's that young fella that looks like a baby? Baby face. Is that the uh, younger Stevenson? Gable. Gable. He's only a ninth grader and he's wrestling at 220 and dominating his opponent. As he's he bigger see. than his brother already. I, wow. I haven't seen him for a few months and he's just taller and longer. And he's going to grow into a heavy weight. I think what Apple Valley is doing is to keep him in between 220 and heavyweight for dual purposes. Wouldn't that be a nice flexibility to have? It would. <laughs> that has been a strategy. Start of the second period, we've got a score of 0 0. Patton chooses down, Brand Kell will be riding. These two are in the finals of 38 last year. At the JJ? Yeah. So this is a repeat of last year's 138 pound weight class, JJ Classic. Mr. Steve Patton just informed us. It's good to have these history buffs around here, keeping us up to date. <laughs> and they were in the finals. And, and you know, you can see the level of competition is improving. From oh, yeah. Year. yeah. This year, they're fighting for third, and last year, they were going for a championship. And Freddie Stroker and um, Griffin Perry or the uh, other two that competed for the championship. You know, you could take those four people, though, to go to a lot of tournaments, and they'll go one, two, three, four in a lot of tournaments. So these are well, well coached young men here. Get out of there. So we haven't got the score up on the board, but obviously Miles has uh, took the lead. And we're in the red ankle man. Cole there you Miles. go. Right, there you go. Got to do a little work sometimes. Multitasking. I don't know how long this lead is going to last no. because I know that Brand Kill is a very, very uh, dangerous wrestler at any moment. Oh, he strike. Yeah. yeah. He likes to get you out of position and put you right on your back. He's not afraid to. Not afraid to thump you. Now, if he doesn't win the state title this year, it wouldn't be because he's not well coached. Oh. No. We got Jimmy Jackson and uh, Scott Davis and Jafari Veneer, and they've got a program out there in Eden Prairie. I heard their their youth program is just outstanding now. So, hats off to the guys out in Eden Prairie. I, I look for big things from them down the road. I I think they're possibly three or four years away from competing for a state title, but with that kind of a coaching lineup, you know that you're going to have a good future developing those young kids, yeah. and they're doing that the right way. There's interesting, Miles just, uh, Miles Patton just, uh, he didn't want to ride Brankell. I know Brankell has a reputation of being very dangerous from the bottom position, and I think Miles knows that as well. What do you think? Oh yeah, I think it's well researched by his coach. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> why waste your energy when you know you can focus using it to take him down? Try and to the get the takedown. High, right? Yep, yep. Heavy on the head. Don't let him breathe. Let's go. Yeah, Bendon kind of has that uh, Dylan Nessness to him where he can be on the bottom and he's working you to the point where I'm going from the bottom to where I have you on your back. So good coaching there. Coach Davis staring intently over in the corner. He always looks happy. <laughs> Super nice guy. Yeah. And he's a great ambassador for the sport of wrestling in Minnesota. No kidding. He's been around the world promoting Minnesota wrestling. He took a team down to Australia a couple of years ago and coached the young guys down there. Stay low. Break in there. They give up. The coaches give up an awful lot of time with family when they're, you know, willing to get their second family that kind of attention. You know, with a coach like that, I'm surprised they did not consider college coaching. Um, that kind of shocks me because I know that he used to be a teacher. I don't know if he still teaches, but... I think he's teaching health uh, up there at Eden Prairie. Prairie. I think so. Wouldn't that be cool to have a coach like that and be your teacher? That'd be cool. You know, the other thing about a lot of these coaches, they teach these young men to be young men. They, they take boys and make young men out of them that are good good stewards of the community. They're, they're 
you know, well respected in the community, well behaved. Usually when you're in a crowd of wrestlers, you've got class people around you from top to bottom. So hats off to everybody that, that contributes to the sport. So 20 seconds left here in the third period and there's still a feeling out process. Nobody really wants to open up a lot because they're afraid of that big mistake. So we're probably headed to overtime. overtime. I wouldn't be the first of the day. <laughs> now with six seconds left, I mean, if they couldn't do it in two minutes and 54 seconds, I'm not sure if they were doing six. All right, they got to take care of it in overtime here. After six matches, conditioning, conditioning, conditioning comes into play here. Six matches for a preseason tournament, and these are two, two, two. These are not, you know, one minute matches. That takes a lot of effort by these young fellas, but you can tell they both spent time in the off season. And the hand control that he's trying to get. Yep. It's going to prevent Brand Kale from attacking him. And he's tying him up with a Russian. And, and Brand Kale is going to the other wrist, trying to do the exact same thing on the other side. Hand control. You know, a year ago, it wasn't as close. And you can tell. Yeah, you're right. You know, it wasn't that close right, last year. In the year. finals. And, oh. Good a shot, year. good counter. Yeah. I have I have not seen Brand Kill improving. I could be wrong here, but I don't see it. I haven't seen anything new, anything outstanding in the last year from him. And that kind of surprises me because Coach Davis is coaching him. Yeah. Usually he brings out the best of So I think wrestlers. they're doing the ride out thing here, the ultimate, are they not on this uh, because they don't want to have it go forever and ever? I think so. But what was that match they had earlier in the year, though, that one on who's number one? Yeah. Those guys wrestled for like 30 oh, minutes. Yeah. That 30 was crazy. Minutes. Crazy I, good. I Here's where Brand Kell's tough. He can ride, crab ride. He can be a tough yeah, 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 yeah. fighter. Miles trying to shift his hips, shake Brand Kell down and pull him down. And that's not going to be an easy task. Uh, he's comfortable there, isn't he? Oh, yeah, but look, if he can free his arm. Uh oh, 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 here it is. Six seconds. If we turn into him, you never know. Shake him, shake him. Oh. <laughs> so, an ultimate ride out, Ben Brankale hangs on to defeat Miles Patton to win third. And Congratulations, were, Ben. And a very, it was very, very close one. Good effort for yeah. both young men working their butt off. They will sleep well tonight. Oh, yeah. All right, who do we have next? Some I don't know. That Let's in. find out. At 152 for third place. Name, please. Got to get the computer huh? up. I oh, know, last name. S-C-H. And Mr. Navarro from Wilmer, Minnesota. Yeah. Novara. All right. Good luck. Okay. How do you say it? No Novara. Navarro. Navarro. Yep. And Schoen Schoenecker from is that, is that is that okay. Chicago Lakes kid? Yeah. Who else is in the Pinnacle program? And we got Schoenecker in the Pinnacle singlet, and with the um, Navarro is in the USA singlet. Now Estevan pulled an upset earlier in the tournament. He beat uh, Michael Clee from Cardinal Newman, California. So that you know this this kid's not afraid to get in there and scrap. Clee is one of the you know kids that they know on the on the national level. And I was shocked to see him get defeated early, that early. And I saw that match. And I was not impressed. Well, you know, our Minnesota kids are tough. They don't wrestle that fancy wrestling. They wrestle hard-nosed wrestling. I'm just and maybe, and maybe that's why we, you know, we don't give them enough credit. <laughs> maybe. So, national rankers out there, please take note. <laughs> oh, that was a good reshot. 
Good scramble by Navarro. Look that leg. Hook it. Hook it with your left arm. Hook it with your left arm. There you go. Now, now you can come up with it. Come up. Come up. Lift. 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 Be patient. Good Don't patience there out. by. Oh, fleeing. Coaches are lobbying for fleeing. Uh, uh, this early in the season, we'll give it to him. Let him, let him get his feet back underneath. Mr. Hall going out on the uh, mat right next to us. So if we kind of zone out, you know, we're kind of sneaking a peek. And the championship match is uh, Hoshlock versus Hall. Uh, Hoshlock came up from Union, Iowa, just for this match. And the, you know, he had to earn his way to get there. Nobody gave it to him, but that could be a good match to watch. Oh yeah, and uh, Hoshlock looked huge. He looks big, doesn't he? Now Union, Iowa is going to be at the Clash, the upcoming Clash, the Minnesota Premier Dual Meet Tournament in the country, as far as as far as dual meet tournaments go. Join us for that. We'll be there. Oh, a nice pass by attempt. Good counter. There you go. Oh, look out! Crashing the table. Saved by the ref. <laughs> nice job, ref. Good positioning, Steve. <laughs> they don't give you enough credit. You're welcome. <laughs> the score is still 0 0 toward the end of first period. The end of the first period. Butter up them refs when you can. You never know when you may need to lobby them for something. So Navarro deferred, Schoenecker chooses the down position. Navarro right into that crab ride. Heavy on the head. How long did that take down to? Not long. Yep, way up. Sorry, took a sneak at the championship match. Mark Hall with a little pass by. So quick that we didn't even have a chance to see it. You know, one thing I wish we had is a year on these. some of these kids. It'd be nice to know uh, what grade they're in so we can kind of gauge a little bit on their, their experience here. Good hand fighting, good pulling on the head, changing levels. Both wrestlers moving here. You know, I'm, I'm impressed with the Navarro kid. Yeah. He persisted himself pretty well. Well, now you think who was his wrestling partner out there in Wilmer? Oh. Mr. Carlson. Oh, yeah. That's They've got some good young wrestlers out there in Wilmer, folks. So hats off to the Cardinals. I think they're the Wilmer Cardinals, right? I think they're red, so I... <laughs> 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 you can tell that I'm from Eastern Pennsylvania. <laughs> the not red. Eastern Minnesota. Come on, so. it'll come, it'll come. I don't know much about teams on trip radar in the metro area. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, you look at. Uh, all around the state, Cam Sikora, border west, way right. out there on the border. Right. You've got uh, recover, recover, recover. Uh, Griffin Perry, right in New Prague, Minnesota. What is it not? I mean, it's not close, but it's a little, a little way out there. A little out there side of there. Down here in southeastern Minnesota, you've got Brady Bergie. You know, you've got kids that are nationally known kids. So it doesn't, it. That comes from the all corners of the state oh, yeah. of Minnesota. Something is in the water in this state. Produce great, excellent wrestlers. I think it's coaching. We've got excellent coaches in this state, dedicated to the sport. They give up an awful lot of their time and energy for their their sport. Their families sacrifice a lot. Next time, next time you don't agree with the coach, you spend some time in watching what they give up to help their families. I, I would agree. I mean, we have. Coach Davis, Coach Jackson, Coach Demery. I mean, many, many other coaches that have built what we have today. Yeah. Nice, nice. A lot of these programs are, you know, 20 and 30 year coaches. That it, it's a commitment for those guys. And, and wrestling coaching is not 
recreational. It's a lifestyle. It's not glamorous. We appreciate what wrestling coaches do. Uh, stalemate here. A minute 25 in the third period, still a tied score. These are two well matched, well matched wrestlers. Both pulling on that head, trying to get the wrestler out of position. Good shot, reshot, but also good defense by Navarro, keeping him. Yeah, he's in good position. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to get scored on there because Schoenecker was in deep on that one. And his hip seems to be in the right spot, keeping his opponent down. Yep, right on top of that right. head and neck. Like, if you're making a coaching video, that's what you want to show your kids, where the hip should be if you're in the position that he's at. And it has to be balanced too. It can't be off balance. It can't be to the side, or you know, it can't just be one time. It's got to be constant pressure. Scramble on the edge of the mat. Wizard situation. Who's going to win that one? Right now, it doesn't appear like we're having a winner out of this one. <laughs> I think they're both well, well coached. They're both comfortable right there. Thirty seconds. Here we go. If there's 30 anything seconds left, or overtime, what yep. is your bet? I'm, I'm betting on <laughs> overtime. regulation, no overtime. <laughs> Somebody's going to score right here. Oh, there's a good shot. Yeah. Good chance for scoring right here. They know that time is, time is up. A lot of head pressure trying for that spin. Just a, there you go. Oh, they you they got gave it. him the two. Yep. You are correct. It is in regulation. And he positioned himself yeah. to win that one. I mean, yeah, that head pressure kept that Schoenecker out of position. Navarro deserves this, baby. I think so. They both wrestle hard, and he just knows when to do it. They're yep. doing it at the right time, the right technique. That's off to Estevan. Yep. Name, please. Nick Green, Waconia. Green? Nick Green, Waconia. Name, please. I'm sorry? Forrest Yeniman. Yeniman, okay. Now we saw Forrest earlier in the day yep. at 160 pounds are we at? So we have Green versus Yeniman. Green versus Yeniman. Green is in red. He's in that multi-colored multi whatever single. And Yeniman is in red. Yeniman is from uh, Neha, Wisconsin. And Nick Green from Waconia is in the red, red with the red leg band. Yeniman is wearing the black headgear as well. So. Now is Waconia home of Max Williams, the guy that helped the Gophers defeat Iowa so soundly yesterday at the, the bank? Uh, that's right. I think uh, it is. You know, that was Coach fun. Coach Kill. Fun game to listen to. Amazing oh, job. cradle to the back and wow, the spin for the first Green. Spin for, this is Nick Green from Waconia. That's a tough position. Good for him. Congratulations to him. You were saying Coach Kill. Yep, Coach. Right, and he did a great job with a goal for football program. Every year, a little baby step up, and you know. He'll have them contending for national titles. Wouldn't that be nice to hear from you? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, gotta win the Big Ten first, and then we'll talk. For the fourth time. Although they do have Mark a chance of winning. Of Apple Valley. What is it? Matt Noss. Noss? Yeah. From uh, Anoka. Yep. Matt Noss from Anoka, and where are you from? Thief River Falls. Thanks for coming down. Hey, what is it? So we have Matt Noss from Anoka. Yep. And, and he's Huddy's taking club. on the gentleman from Thief River Falls that I didn't catch his name, yeah. but I caught where he's from. Polchek. Hey, this is this is Nathaniel. Hey, what happened to him last year? Did he hurt his? Okay. Yeah, be sure. Wrestling for the championship. Yeah, now. Now. In the green ankle band. I'm glad that he came down. Uh, Albert Lee. Nathaniel's got a good good. And we're in the red ankle band from Morehead, Minnesota. Samuel Neos Program Neos all the way up there in Thief River Falls. Neos is in the oh, red yeah. singlet with the Minnesota logo on the back. Yeah. 
and Holochak is uh, in a maroon, dark maroon uh, singlet. Yeah. All 152 pound place winners, all 152 pound place winners. Please what year is Nathaniel? The you. Thank you. It's nice to know where the what grade these kids are. Yeah, Nathaniel missed the state tournament last year because he injury. heard a had an injury, and that's just kind of so sad when you you get right to the end of the season, you don't get to compete. But Stop, hopefully this year it pays off for him. And the year before, do you know how he did? I do Shut not. I know he was there, but I can't remember what he did. Sorry. Usually I have some of that stuff stuck in the cobwebs way back there, but <laughs> cobwebs are getting a little dustier than they used to be. Maybe it's time for a cleanup here. Did Nas wrestle Mr. Hall in the finals up at the state tournament last year? I don't remember who did. It's, I, can, I need to look it up. Okay. I know Matt's had a lot of success on the high school mat, so. Product of the Unoka Tornadoes, right, Section Seven. Again, one of those, one Double of those four. well bat battle tested storied, storied programs. And I think in this upcoming year with um, Forest Lake and St. Francis and St. Michael, I I always get my tickets ready to go when it's the section tournament time. <laughs> Speaking of tag section tournament time, I'm very interested in seeing Prior Lake versus Shakopee this year. You know, with Prior Lake is a well-rounded team, and Shakopee just have talented individuals. They could have three to four state champions yeah. on that team. Multiple qualifiers. Right, oh, and, and about six or seven to qualify. You know, Prior Lake's going to be tough when they get to the top. Alex Hart, Riley Strifel. Right. They are going to be. That's a one-two combination. It's going to be hard to hard to come up. But Probably yes. could, could be match up with Apple Valley Biggies. Yeah. But um, but outside of that, I, we don't see how they can. You know, Shakopee needs to keep it close. Finish. Yeah. Got a lock on it. The Sabers will be down at the Clash this year. They're a first-time entrant, but uh, you know Owen Webster, Alex Crow. Uh, Lloyd, Alex Lloyd, They're, they've got some good young wrestlers going on in Shakopee, so welcome to the Clash. They they need the, the bigger guys to wrestle better to, you know, finish in the, uh, the higher brackets at the Clash. Sometimes sometimes those big tournaments are where it, a team will come together and they'll, they'll realize that, you know what, I do need to step up my game and if I do, it's better for our program. See, that's one of the things that great teams understand and, and mediocre teams don't. No, that was a good pass by oh, comfortable, beautiful. relaxed off of that. That makes score two to one in favor of Nathaniel Holacek. Nas patiently works back to his feet. Ties the score back up 2 2. Take an angle. 20 seconds. Mobile. A little snap down pass by attempt there. Holacek just got that head just right in the center of Nas's chest. Yeah, he Nas, just Nas, likes that position, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's aggressive, but I think Nas is just saving up energy for our next period, <laughs> knowing how much time is left rather than yeah. wasting it. Yeah. Physical don't go flat, don't go flat, push back. Very physical. Yeah, oh, now, yeah. come, come again. Up, up to your feet. Oh. Lay out, lay kick, out. Kick. <laughs> There's almost right, a flight hey. return to the mat there. Yeah. <laughs> Just, he knew what was going to happen. Just wait for the replica. Nas is going to cut him, put him on his feet. He 
kind of realizes he can't down. score riding him, so he's going to take his shot at uh, catching him on a takedown. So well, that's he just a smart move with yep. a minute left. Yep, because he'd hate to give a escape, escape of 15, on lose, 10 right. seconds left. Right, so Nas planning ahead here. Ooh, a nice drag attempt there. Good recovery by Halicek. You can see a little Double flash down. of Anoka coaching. Yeah. Leg back, Very. leg back. No, 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 don't just cut. No. You can get see who the aggressor is there, and it pays off right. for the takedown. Let's get on one. Let's get on one. Missed that one. <laughs> That's right, the ref was in the way anyhow. <laughs> so the score is four to three, Nas is leading. That was good planning though, like we that said earlier. Planning. You know, he knew that uh, he knew that it was gonna be hard to hard to score. Now the question is, yes, sir. Since you've taken him down, would you do it again or just ride right, come on, him? Get that. I think from here I'd try to ride him because he just Explode. You know, got that mental advantage uh, 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 right now. Or oh, yeah, some, get some get coaches feet. might argue that hey, you got a mental edge on him. Come on, cut him. Grab his hand, because you believe you can take him down again. The score is still going to be go to tied. If, if you don't, but you get that mental edge, and again, it's philosophy. Differences in philosophy and coaching. That's true. I know. So if you can ride him here, that's even more right. of a, I've got control, and I'm not going to let you go. So yeah, it's a, it's a, you have to know your wrestler and know right. what they were comfortable I with. I totally too. agree with you. Yep. Hey, this is our opportunity. Now seeing how calm Nas is. Yep. Relax. Yep. No sit up. I would feet. let him go. I would give him a right. right here. Yeah. yeah. Because now I got to do it lay around. Left. Right, I, I wouldn't do it now, no. but like 50 oh, seconds. Go, 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 oh, that was go. good. Good initial surge there. Nas, this is comfortable, up, like I said. Followed him, followed him. Now he's heavy on the head, heavy on the head. Yeah, Deep waist. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the match that is was over. It. That was a good, good surge there by Holacek. I think that was his last burst of energy. Burst of energy. For a preseason match, that was a pretty, pretty well was, fought match there. Yeah. So at 170 pounds. And you champion. Hey, good burst of energy. How'd you do last year's state? Yeah. Uh, this is the second time they wrestled today. First time they lost on a star call. Coaching. <laughs> no. <laughs> very similar match. Yeah, very similar match. Wait, wait, guys. Name, please. Oh. Logan Judge from Bloomington Judge. Kennedy. And then who's against the other one? Jonathan Zarnke. How do you spell that? Chaska. Z-A-R-N-K-E. Yep. I The judge family sent down a few representatives to the tournament, so thanks for coming down and joining us. All right, Carolyn, you guys have a safe trip home. Zarnke out of Chaska. Don't, don't, don't break the sound barrier going on. <laughs> no wrestling at 195 pounds. In the green, in, in the red, at 182, wrestling for third place. And in the green, man, that's actually going to be the red, man. That's confusing. He's got both of them on, <laughs> yeah. I think we Two green socks. Out of Apple Valley, Bobby Stevenson. Well, this is a contrast in body styles, but you know, you get that when you get up to this 182 pound weight class. Obviously a strong young fellow there from from Chaska, Mr. Zarnke, thick in the... Everywhere. Yeah, and a long stretched out Logan Judge. No. But that's what I love about wrestling. You can have different body types, different styles, and you can be successful. You don't have to be an Adonis and be a successful wrestler. You don't have to be a, you know, any right. specific type. Shape, but yeah, exactly. And, and you can be as big as you want and as small as you want. You're still contributing to the team. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like football if you're too tiny and you're... You can't play the sport as well as bigger guys. Right, your 106 pounder counts as much as the as a heavyweight. Right. You know, it just <laughs> unfortunately the way Minnesota sets up, it's always the heavyweight that's out on the mat. That decided match. It didn't matter what happened up until then. It's a heavyweight's responsibility. Right. <laughs> 
and that's what I enjoy about the class is that each round they start at a random, I mean, they pick a random way to start. The start of the tournament, and yep. And they rotate all the way. That's kind of, that follows the national, uh, you know, nationally a lot of, a lot of states have gone to that, so, so that's kind of why they do that. Minnesota hasn't looked into that. They, Kicked it around. I know that I've I've heard in the past that they've kicked it around, but I, I do enjoy the, I do enjoy the tradition. Yet at the same time, I think you're right. It would it takes some of the pressure off right, of the, the heavyweight. Heavy. Right. So the score is two to nothing. A minute fifty here in the Zanke. second piece. Zanke is leading. He's Zanke, heavy on that Russian oh yeah. bar. Zanki got the type of body that I would, I have, and I can see why he won that Russian. Yeah, you can use that power that he has there. And at the same time, keeping him Ooh, close. Good push by, good recovery by Zanki. I thought Judge had that one. I thought too, but he got the arm in there. Yep. yep. Oh, that's a mistake. He should not have taken that out. Because if, if he had time or was still on the mat, that would have been a takedown. He got lucky there. Lucky. Need better coaching there. Wait, nobody's coaching today. <laughs> Volunteers. <laughs> so at 182, Zanke is leading two to zero with a minute left in the second period. Couple of strong young fellas here. The battling position. Like my hand was gonna. <laughs> <stop>. <laughs> Mine either, but yeah, you, know, you had to make the attempt, right? Yeah. Referees asking for some action here. A couple of young bulls pushing back and forth. Trying to find an opening. A lot of these guys are just looking for that little, that little misstep, that little lapse, a momentary lapse in concentration. I'm surprised that Judd has a his reach more. Yeah. Bobby Stevenson from Apple Valley. So going into the third period, Zarnke still leads. Ooh, I thought he was just going to cut him, but then Me he too. jumped into that headlight. Maybe yeah, looking for a little tilt. Yep, but I, with, with the body shape and the position, that wasn't very wise. Sometimes he catches guys off guard, though. I, I think uh, Judge is seasoned enough that yeah. he won't fall for that. And the other match, Gable Stevenson taking on Tim Christensen. That'll be a good match. JJ Classic Championship. We have Gable Stevenson from Apple Valley and Tristan Westerland. Out of bounds, back to the center with a minute 23 left. Oh, that's Westerland. Okay, sorry. Because Christensen was lighter. Yep, you're right. Circle right away. Oh, he's into the body lock. Somebody's going. Oh, yeah. That was a good scramble. Good position. Yeah. By Zarn I mean, uh, I yeah, thought Judge was going to toss him, but Zarnke did a real nice job recovering and then coming out on top in that position. I think your observation is dead on it. A 
might have taken the wind out of the sails there of young Mr. Judge. That I, was, uh, I think so. With a quick move like that. Yep, he loaded her up. And, and it, you know, it's wearing down when a, up, up, a, guy, up. a guy's riding you at, Jump out of there. at this weight. Yeah, they're chopping on you and pulling on you, deep waist. There's a lot of energy being expelled. Five, and we are going to settle it uh, right there. Zanke lets him go. And he knew he had the match, so he wins four to two. Yeah. Congratulations, Name to Jessica. Cody Anderson. From Redwood Valley, Redwood Valley Minnesota. Yeah. All right. And Michael Bothell, Green Rapids. Good luck. How do you, how do you spell it? Oh. Michael, M I C H A E O. B O T H W E L L. All right. Thank you. Okay, what's your name? Bothwell and Anderson. Pressing for 195 pound third place. Okay, Anderson Oops. is in red. And yep. Bothwell. Is in, is in uh, uh, multicolored multi blue. Yeah. Yeah. Big heavy I'm glad that they hard. filled in this weight class because you know it's important for these weight classes to fill in, and you know sometimes people say, "Oh, I don't want to come down to wrestle Bobby Stevenson." Well, yeah, but you have all these other kids to wrestle, so come down and give it a shot and learn something when you do get a chance to wrestle a Bobby Stevenson. And I, I think you um, got to respect these kids for, you know, paying money for a good cause, coming yep. down and, yep. and get beat, but, you know, like you said, they're still learning. And Bothwell just got a takedown and scores 2-0. <laughs> the referee got rebind on the table. Again, preseason form for everybody. Back, Cody. Stand up, into it. There's a lot of pressure on that shoulder, head and shoulders. Bothwell trying to bring him back to the mat. Back your face. Now he needs to turn him back towards the center here. And your 2014 JJ Classic champion at 220 pounds. Gable Stevenson of Apple Valley. Wow. Young kid stuff. Uh, I'm surprised there are a lot more falls on the finals than in the third place match. They've been good matches. Looks pretty relaxed. Bothwell from Coon Rapids, I don't recognize the name. Was he in the state tournament last year, do you know? I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's why I asked. I wasn't quite sure, so. Take that arm. I think, uh, that arm I think he's handling Anderson right now pretty well. Yeah. And Anderson is uh, trying to get the hand control again, and the Bothwell's grip is so strong that he couldn't get it out. A lot of pressure again applied there in the head and shoulder region. Yeah, and he's riding really well, good position. Yep. He's trying to Working for a head lever. Right. That's a good point, Eric. You know, a lot of these kids, they try one position and they just keep trying it over and over again. Bothwell's doing a good job moving from one one Move position to, to another, try right. different things. Cause and well, right now you got a bar and a half. Bar right? and a half. I mean, how often do you see that? From Not from a big guy. No. He's a pretty good size. You got a bar on the wrist. Remember what I said about breaking the guy down? Yep, yep. But you want to get him on his right. on his belly. Right. Yeah. And Careful. he's not there yet. Not yet. How do you get him there from there? Oh, many. We want to announce the 2014 There you go. There you go. He left the ball. Yep. 
but he lost the bar in that process. That's okay. Uh, yep. A lot of great wrestlers here. Just like you a said, you got to take step two before three and four. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, this takes a lot of energy. Just get from your belly back to your knees. So right. he's, he's but, uh, wearing, Rockwell's wearing Anderson down here by just controlling him on the top. And the ref is not calling that because he's trying new things. He's working yep. at different angles. Cody, fire up. Sometimes, you know, guys on top get first rate and try something stupid. Time, Cody. He's not doing that. He, that's true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. he's, he's good position. He's trying new things and rode him the whole time. Yeah. It totally earned those two points. No. Okay. Right away. So we have two minutes left in the third period, or start of the third period here, sorry. Anderson will be on top. Bothwell throws him off and back to his feet. There's a nice double leg takedown pressure to the front, looking for the half. To rescue your gear. Yep. That was a nice takedown by Bothwell, and I think he's getting comfortable on his feet, being confident, so he's Let him go. kind of cut him there, looking for maybe oh, a little duck under, a little heavy. Wow, that's a lot, a lot of energy. A lot of force and energy and yeah. determination to finish that. I'm surprised and that they didn't him into have, a cradle. Well, 220 is over, so this is the last match. Yeah. So. I think we have a... That's it. Oh, we're 220. No one more. That was a round robin, so that one's oh, already okay. decided so too. So this is it. This is it for us, right, folks. Mark. Hello? Extra point. Good little place. Winners of 220, right, please come up to the head stand. Thanks, bye. <laughs> turn, turn she's as pink as her dress that she's wearing, or her sweater she's wearing. Bears the young lady. Popwell did a nice job. He controlled that match from start oh, yeah. to finish. He wins seven to two. So, and that would be it for the our broadcast. Classic. Nice, nice job, job Dan. <laughs> and um, we're looking forward to see you at the Clash. The Clash, the Minnesota Christmas Tournament, the uh, Holiday Cup. A lot of good things coming up on MinUSA. So, signing off for now, folks, but tune in throughout the season.